King of the Wind by Margaret Henry, illustrated by Wesley Dennis. King of the Wind. The Great Sun. The morning fog had lifted, giving way to a clear day. Nearly all the people of Winster on Tenero and a thousand of visitors were surging into Kenilworth Park, filling the stands and overflowing to the infield. It was the greatest crowd ever to attend at a race in Canada. For this was the day of the match race between Man O' War, the great American horse, and Sir Barton, the pride of Canada. Bands were playing first an American air, then a Canadian flag. Flags of both countries draped the grandstand and fluttered against the sky. Under a covered paddock, Man O' War, affectionately known as Big Red, was being saddled for his 21st race. As the trainer was about, to tighten the girth stirrup, he turned to the jockey at, his, at his elbow. Let Red run his own race, he said. Don't hold him down. The freckle-faced jockey nodded. He looked over at the clock. It was exactly, in exactly 20 minutes, Man of War would meet Sir Barton, the horse that had won the Kentucky Derby in Preakness and Belmont in one year. Sir Barton was a triple crown championship champion, a horse to be reckoned with. The trainer finished his careful check of saddle cloths and weight pads and signaled the jo- to the jockey. He swung up on Man of War. He had ten minutes to walk him around the saddling ring. Ten minutes to calm him down. Without the, this ritual, Big Red would, was an unruly as a colt. Across the paddock, the trainer caught the eye of Samuel Riddler, the owner of Man of War. They watched the ripple of the smooth muscles. They watched the ripple of the smooth muscles as the horse walked. The curving of his powerful neck and burnished red gold of his coat. Their, their glances locked. Big Red's face was fine fed. They were agreeing with each other. He's in top form. Meanwhile, in Sir Barton's camp, we laid plans well laid plans were being rehearsed. Sir Barton was to run an explosion race. Instead of matching speed for speed around the track, he was to start off with a wild spurt and run Man o' War off his feet. It was a good plan, for everyone knew there was no greater sprinter than Sir Barton. If, at the very start of the race, he could get Man o' War to overreach the usual stride, he might never find it again. The race would be won in the first furlong. The budgel savage, Sir Barton, a dark chestnut horse, and Man o' War, the red golden stallion, were paraded past the judges' stand, past the grandstand, past the stand, were where moving picturing men moving picture men were grinding their cameras. Manor War heard the roar of the crowds. He smelled his opponent, but his eyes were fixed on the track. Spread out, clean and inviting before him. He knew what it meant. Business. His business. Racing. He had walked enough. He was ready to go. Now he was moving toward the barrier, plunging against it nervously, trying to spring it. Sir Barton caught his excitement. He strained against the webbing, and almost at once it, it was sprung. Like a two-horse team, the gold-red horse and the dark chestnut were off together. According to plan, Sir Barton's jockey began to use him the whip, and the Canadian horse shot to the front, one of the faster sprints in history. Men of War's jockey was holding him back, saving speed for the finish, but Man of War had other ideas. He fought for him. He pulled at the bit. He was in business for himself. And the jockey remembered the trainer's words. Let Red run his own race. Don't hold it up. Don't hold him in. He gave Man of War his head. Like a Dynamo on the loose. Big Red leaped out. He was a machine with pinstons for leg. Pinstons that struck out in perfect rhythm. He caught Sir Barton. He flew past him in great long leaps. It was Man of War who was running the explosion race. It was Man of War who was running Sir Barton off his feet. The jockey looked back. He saw the Canadian horse hop whistling, trying to recover his own pace. The race was uh, as good as as one. It was one. Man of War passed the finish post seven lengths ahead. 
The crowd swept onto the tracks, throwing walking sticks, hats, handkerchiefs high in the air. They'd forgotten whether they're Canadian or American. They had never seen a race like this. They surged toward the judges, platforming where Man of War was standing proudly by Sam. But while Samuel Riddle was accepting the gold trophy cup that the big horse had won. Your horse can't be beaten, Sir Barnes, and I exclaimed and shook Mr. Riddle's hand. Suddenly, Big Red shied and heard the popping cork, the cork of the champagne bottle. This curiously came over him. His nose closed, watching the wine bubbling into the trophy cup. He was thirsty. He strained toward the cup, Mr. Riddle's mouth. Bring some water. It's, bring me some water. It's not, that is not too cold, he directed. But the crowd murmured in surprise, Mr. Riddle poured the champagne out of the turf. He wiped the cup clean with a handkerchief and filled it with water and held it towards the horse. And Man of War drank out of the great gold cup. He won it, did he, didn't he? He won it, didn't he? Mr. Riddle asked his voice, strangely husky. The cheer went from 30,000 throats. It was as good, it was a good ending to a race. Sir Barnes owner was right. Big, big red could not be beaten. Already the 30 year old Colt had made five American records and two world records. He had proven himself a terrific sprinter over short distance and a powerful stare over long ones. Even more remarkable, he had carried a handicap, carried a handicap and more than 30, 130 pounds, while his rival carried 114 pounds. Rivals carried 114. 108 pounds, 104 pounds. No wonder the crowds look, took the great colt. No wonder the crowds took this 